it's a family thing. Where did Bob Childers actually live? Bob lived back here at the back of the Gypsy Cafe. I don't know this way. Childers never lived in the house. No, you know, he showered and ate and took care of things in the house. But so why did he not live in the house? Because he had his trailer. <laughs> he would accept visitors and guests, you know, and Bob liked to be discreet about things. Bob's trailer was right here, and then he had a rope swing that kind of came off of there for two for when he would, you know, have visitors out. And the ladies liked Bob a lot, so he entertained often. Um, but uh, I was also out here the day that his trailer burned to the ground. So what happened with that? Uh, caught on fire while he was asleep inside. And uh, I actually was going to spin, the, I, I came to Stillwater, I was living in Oklahoma City, I came here, we jammed, I was going to stay and, and leave the next day, but I, I, for some reason I said, man, I'm just going to go home, I need to go home. He said, all right, so I left and went home, but for some reason I got up the next morning and drove back out here. When I got out here, he was sweeping up in the sweeping up the ashes. McClure pulled up on his bicycle, and uh, I was kind of standing here with Bob, and Mike said, man, Bob, what happened? Bob looked at him and said, God said it's time to move. <laughs> Which is kind of what happened. But, uh, no, man, it was, having Childers out here was a treat, for sure. He, he was the embodiment of the farm, especially in the music years. Um, you know, people would seek him out, songwriters, uh, music players. He introduced Jason Boland to Roger Ray, and they started the Stragglers from right here. He got a meeting hooked up with those two guys, and Grant Tracy. Grant was in on the meeting, too. By God, they started a band. Um, you know, Bob was just a pivotal character, man. Pivotal. He, uh, he launched a thousand ships right here at the Red Dirt Gypsy Cafe farm. Certainly did. The farm uh, was abandoned in, two th in roughly 2000. Uh, you know, the party couldn't stop. Had just had to move into town. So. Uh, uh, the ragweed guy, B or Cody, Bolin, uh, Stoney, those guys uh, took a place in, uh, in town on University Circle called the Yellow House. It was just a giant yellow house. And it was just an exact replica of the farm only in town. And the party went on there and went on and went on. And, um, you know, those guys held court at the Yellow House for, oh, probably a good seven, eight years. And... After we couldn't, re after Red, after Red Dirt Rangers, after we couldn't rehearse here, we started rehearsing at the Yellow House. You know, we just moved locations. I mean, there's several nights I slept on a, like a beach chair, a lounge chair, or if somebody was sleeping on the couch, or if somebody didn't have Bob Childers' couch in his, his trailer. But uh, man, I'd ride. I didn't have a truck. I had one, but it didn't run. So I was, I'd ride a bike out there borrowed Mike McClure's bicycle and rode it around town and kind of homeless really I mean I I stayed at a dude's house most of the time but I'd stay at the farm just because it was it was like school you know was learning but man there's been I, I, I gotta say my favorite memory there's a lot and there's also a lot that aren't there anymore because it wasn't the soberest experience most nights but, yeah I mean it wasn't an animal house but it was there's a lot of dope smoking a lot of a lot of wine drinking a lot of beer drinking and but uh, my favorite night um, Jimmy Lefebvre come through and he just got back from Europe and that was just unheard of to me people going to Europe to play music that wasn't played on the radio so crazy for me to wrap my head around it now it's not but um, Lefebvre came to town, and he just got back from Europe, pulled in in a white van, set up, played out the farm for free, and people brought, it was potluck dinner, people brought food out and ice chests, and if you talked, you were asked to leave, if you talked again, you were forced to leave, and uh, Tom Skinner opened for him, 
And I was sitting in a lawn chair, like I did every night, and um, I had no idea that Tom was going to get me up. And he said, and bring a friend of mine up here and play. And I was 17, maybe. Maybe. And uh, yeah, I was 17. I, he uh, asked me to get up and play a Steve Earle song that I had, I had learned, and he liked it so much that he learned it from me. So you want me to get up and play that tune? I got up. I've still never been as nervous. You know, as all friends and family and band members and stuff. But I was still so nervous because he let me. He had faith in me. You know, Red Dirt is one of those things that you ask 15 people, you're going to get 30 different answers. Uh, to me, it's it's just an appreciation of uh, music. Um, it's more of a singer-songwriter based uh, type of genre rather than uh, record a lot of songs that other people write, uh, in my opinion. Um, it's also a lot more family-oriented than a lot of the mainstream, mainstream stuff, so I guess that would be the, the g generic answer that I would give for it. Just Really? <laughs> wow, that's good. Yeah. Is that the mailman? Yeah. You don't like it? Get the hell out, you know? <laughs> Straight up. All right, you guys want to hear some boys from Oklahoma before we take a next break? Yeah, we did. Um, we'll do this one. We'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll drive to the body side. So. Are you going to be one of those studio <laughs> produced people? Or do you sound better? Or like, eating, can you break a real show? Can you keep the people rocking for 120 minutes? Or do you just sell a CD? That's what Red Dirt's about. And I will say that right now. That's end of the line. We're out there beating the streets, putting the mileage on the road, singing from our hearts, hands down. You can go from Brandon Clark to, you know, Bowen and, and you know they're, they're writing the same kind of songs doing the same kind of stuff but it, it's different and then you can you can take it all the way to Dustin Pitsley you know consider him you know Red Dirt and and you can take all these ends of the spectrum I mean Randy Crouch for God's sakes that ain't country you know that's <laughs> you know that's that's you know that's bald I don't think that you actually have to have Red Dirt to, or be from Stillwater to, or be from Stillwater I, I think it's the attitude. If they're writing, if you're writing your own songs and putting out what you feel, I you know, call it Red Dirt or call it Arkansas music. I don't give a damn what you call it. If it's good music, if it's good music, I'm down <laughs> for it. We got we got some mountain sprouts you know, all the time. Yeah, mountain yeah. sprouts kill. You know, we started out. Red Dirt wasn't foremost on our mind as a band, but we were just playing, having a good time. And then that Payne County line used to do the you know where the fans sent right. in ballots and voted for their favorite bands in different categories. Right. And bam, we won that and got basically, okay, we were best red dirt band of the year. That's what they voted us for. So we kind of never really threw the flag as much as we we, we played their music. Because we, we love the red dirt scenes of music. All of the guys that started it, we, we cover their songs in our show. Well, and, and you don't you don't want to go to any gig, you know, even as a solo artist, and, and sound like the damn jukebox. You know, if you want your Bob Seger, well, and playing on the damn jukebox, but you know, hey, check this out. You know, this is a guy named Stan Lou. Yeah, you know? Bob Childers and Tom Skinner. I think they measure, yeah. man. Yeah. You, know, you, you don't have to be folk song. You don't have to be this. It's just, just it's it's not so much as the music. It's also it seems like everybody's been involved in the red dirt right. scene. It is the, how everybody gets along. Uh, the, the, That's why I grew my hair long. I'm still Bob Childers <laughs> talking to me. Yeah. Everybody, it's, it's just a, it's an attitude more than it is just the music itself. I mean, we got hit with this question on the radio once live, and it was like, uh, you know, well, it's a mixture of everything in a blender. And it's we'll, be, we'll be back. The great divide, Mike McClure, too, you know, the, the, the same but so different. I think to be Red Dirt, you had to have been a part of that group from Stillwater who um, grew up, who, who defined it. You know, you got Mike McClure, you know, the great divide. Cross Game Ragweed, Jason Bowman, Stoney, Bo Phillips, you know, it's Red Dirt Rangers. That, to me, that's right if you call Red Dirt. I feel, to call me Red Dirt, is <coughs> being disrespectful to those guys who actually, 
you know, who, who, who made that music. You know, I'm, I'm just a guy that got lucky and kind of rode a wave. I just happened to be in the same place and, and playing the same venues and became friends with some of them. But I, I kind of feel it's just a, it's disrespectful to them to uh, for us to hold that banner. You had the cross Canadian ragweeds. Cody, obviously Cody Canada has went from Stillwater. Now he lives in New Braunfels, Texas. So, uh, the, it, it, you know, Texas and red dirt music, Texas honky tonk music was so similar in some of the ways that it was listened to that I think it, it was an honest and a very easy merge together because it was, uh, I don't for lack of a better way to put it, it was just, it's, it's like putting pe pepperoni on a pizza. It was easy, it was there, you know, and it was so easy to merge the two that it was kind of a natural connection. When we started going to Texas, people didn't really like us because we were from Oklahoma. And I remember one night in Lubbock, you know, they were we, the Lubbock Stare is what we all called it. But we were on stage, and they were in a half moon around the dance floor. You know, there's you could put 300 people in the dance floor, but they they wouldn't give in. You know, and finally I just said, "Man, y'all quit thinking about football." You know, we I, we could care less about football. Let's just have a good time. And it worked. You know, and then there was the fans talking about the rival rivalry between. Texas music and Okie music, and then now every time somebody says Red, Red Dirt or Texas, it's always together with a slash in the middle, you know, and that's cool. 